In the 1990s and 2000s, developer Naughty Dog was best known for Crash Bandicoot and Jack and Daxter. When the PlayStation 3 was getting made, it presented an opportunity for them to create a new IP that would take advantage of the increase in graphical power. That IP would become Uncharted Drake's Fortune, a third-person action-adventure game first released in 2007, with a remaster releasing in 2015. Taking clear inspiration from Indiana Jones, among other sources, it stars a treasure hunter named Nathan Drake, who is pursuing El Dorado, the legend of the lost city of gold. It was universally praised at release and has sold a total of 4.8 million copies lifetime. When Uncharted gets brought up nowadays, usually it's the sequels that get the most attention, and rightly so, but that should not diminish Drake's fortune. It does have some rough edges, but it built a solid foundation of ideas that I think are still enjoyable in 2024. The first standout for Uncharted is its presentation. The leap to the PS3 allowed for much more detail in the level design, with improved lighting and dynamic shadows, as well as depicting a grander scope. Large scripted set pieces make it feel like you're in a summer blockbuster movie. Water effects are realistic, and going for a swim actually makes your clothes soaking wet. I especially love the dungeons and bunkers and the creepy vibe they give off. Most notable is the large set of animations. Movement is dynamic and adjusts automatically based on the scenario. For example, Nate jogs when roaming around, but walks slowly on fragile platforms, and sprints when in peril. When using the stairs, his body adjusts for the steps. It helps that movement feels smooth and natural to control, and is able to handle consecutive actions with ease. The nuance in facial animations bring the characters to life, and greatly enhance the dialogue and emotions. This time, I drive. Okay. I love the little details in Nate's reactions as well. Oh, oh, oh. Great start, Nate. Many of these things didn't have to be put in the game, but anytime developers go out of their way to do so, it should be recognized. Enhancing the presentation is the consistently good soundtrack, with Nate's theme song being iconic. In terms of gameplay, Uncharted 1 is largely a third-person shooter. You carry two weapons at a time, a sidearm and a two-handed weapon. There's a wide range of them from basic pistols and machine guns to more powerful ones like magnums, a sniper rifle, and a grenade launcher. The powerful weapons, as well as grenades and explosive barrels, are comical to use as they send enemies flying. And occasionally you get access to turrets, either stationed in a level or on the back of a moving vehicle. Do note that there is no auto-aiming, so you'll need to get good at aiming with a controller. I appreciate how any weapon can be potent, down to the basic pistols. I did not come across any bullet sponge enemies, and all of them can be taken out with a single headshot, which helps prevent long and drawn out firefights. I also like how you can take cover instead of merely running and rolling around. The cover system is very similar to Gears of War in that you pop out when holding the aim button for best accuracy, or you can blind fire for less accuracy but still avoid getting shot. You do have the option for melee, but sadly it's not very good. Button presses don't consistently line up with the animations, and sometimes combos don't register at all. Melee also is not helpful in crowds since you can still get shot. If you can pull it off, performing a brutal combo provides extra ammo, but I rarely needed it as I was able to find plenty in the environment. I found the enemies in combat encounters to be inconsistent as well. At times they're smart enough to take cover, flank you, and throw explosives, forcing you to move from cover to cover. But other times they stand around and you can stay in one spot and easily take them out. Sometimes they're up high and blend into the background with sniper rifles or RPGs, leading to frustrating deaths trying to figure out where they are. A couple combat sections involve riding a jet ski, and these are the worst. The driving controls are very sloppy, and aiming to shoot requires stopping first, which combined with long-range enemies and explosive barrels gets annoying quickly. Personally, I would have been fine if these sections were cut. When you're not engaging with enemies, there are some platforming and puzzle sections. 
Platforming is straightforward and mainly serves as a segue to the next area or encounter, or to show off impressive visuals. At times it can be a challenge when you have to time your jumps or avoid obstacles, but don't go in expecting anything too elaborate. One thing I do like that I wish more games implemented is Nate will reach out when pressing your analog stick toward a climbable ledge. It can be tricky to see what exactly you can grab, and this little indicator really helps out. For the puzzle sections, there's only a handful of them, and they're fairly easy to solve thanks to your journal. A couple show up early in the game, but then don't come back until the second half. Maybe it's the Tomb Raider fan in me, but at times the action grows a bit stale when you have several encounters in a row, and I would have liked to see more puzzles mixed in to better balance out the gameplay. Finally, as an extra, you can collect treasures scattered about that will unlock bonus content, including outfits, cheats, and behind-the-scenes stuff. The other standout for Uncharted 1 is its grounded take on the three main characters. They're depicted as regular people with ambitions and flaws, enabling players to connect with them. Nathan Drake is charismatic, witty, and adventurous. He's sentimental, as seen by the ring he wears from his supposed relative Sir Francis Drake. He has doubts and fears, gets outmaneuvered and discouraged, but is persistent. He seeks to do right by others, even if it involves an enemy. Then there's Elena Fisher, a journalist who's obsessed with her camera, eager to capture the next big story. She's a go-getter, optimistic, kind, and loyal. She and Nate start out as business partners, but gradually become attached as they go through trials together. And finally, Victor Sullivan, also known as Sully, is a mentor to Nate, while also obsessed with finding treasure. So much so that the plot is driven by the fact that he's indebted to someone and promised El Dorado as payment. He's sarcastic and shrewd and looks out for the people he cares about. All three characters develop a believable chemistry throughout the story, and by the end are inseparable. Their personalities contribute to the overall tone being lighthearted, over the top, and having a great sense of humor. Shouldn't we call the authorities or something? Oh, that'd be a great idea, but we don't exactly have a permit to be here. What? Yeah, so unless you want to end up in a Panamanian jail, we should probably handle this ourselves. But what's worse? You obviously haven't been in a Panamanian jail. Do you know how to use one of these? Uh, yeah, it's like a camera. You just you point and shoot, right? Good girl. Now one thing I'll mention briefly is I do recognize there's some dissonance between the characters and the gameplay. Nate is not in peak physical condition and yet is somehow able to climb anything without gear. He wants to do right by others but then turns around and mows down hundreds of enemies. It goes to show how difficult it is to depict realism in video games and the fact that Naughty Dog got pretty close should be commendable. I had a great time revisiting Uncharted Drake's Fortune. Despite its gameplay needing some polish, the impressive presentation and memorable characters still hold up well in 2024. At the very least, it should be appreciated for laying the groundwork for future titles. If you're into the likes of Indiana Jones, Tomb Raider, or National Treasure, definitely give this game a look. I think you'll enjoy it. And the best part? It only gets better from here. <laughs>